Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, the Lamb Lord, without Lord, blemish or spot, and by thy precious blood, O Jesus, 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 Eternal Father, excuse me, O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 O Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 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 O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of thy beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. 
By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. By thy precious blood, O Jesus. Purify and sanctify thy priest. O Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Have mercy on all thy priests. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, we're on page 69. Okay, we're looking at Tuesday, June 17th, 2008. Thank you. It says, trust me with all the events of your life. I will not abandon you. You are mine, and I will not forsake you. The decisions of men are all in my hands. Nothing will befall you that I do not permit. I will give my grace to accept the changing circumstances of your life. It is I who am behind all happens to you. Nothing escapes my wisdom. Nothing escapes my love. Nothing escapes my omnipotence. Trust me and be at peace. I bless you with the love of my sacred heart. Do not be afraid. Tell me again and again that you trust in my merciful love for you. Now, once again, Jesus is speaking of his mercy for all mankind. Now, with that mercy, he is going to mention here some facts that have come, up, come about here within the past few days with this abuse crisis. <coughs> now, he says there on June 19th of 08, I would have you kneel before your brothers to wash their feet. Notice here, women are not included in the washing of feet. So guys that do that are wrong. It is part of the ordination rite in the early church. I would have you kneel before your brothers to wash their feet. I would have you minister to them in their weakness, in their brokenness, and in the shame that too often weighs upon their shoulders. In other words, the burdens now are going to be placed upon those that are faithful and loyal, bishops and priests. Now, in regards to that, the shamefulness that has come about, they are going after the Pope. And we knew this was going to happen. The Argentinian government and the bishops over the Chile incident where he moved bishops from one country to another. That story is broken on, in, on national news. If it goes, he could be tried as head of state. And if that goes through, it would be the first time in history A pope has stood trial as head of state of Vatican City. Mm -hmm. hmm. 
So we're watching that story very carefully. Today, our bishop is going on the air uh, at 11 o'clock uh, to speak about the, uh, the abuse crisis of, of the young children, of adults, of clergy, and abusiveness in this situation now that has occurred. It is a prophecy that has come forth. Um, and as we look at this here, we're going to see it unfold. It says there, encourage them, bless them, assist them with the gifts I have placed for you in their sake. Let no priest, let no priest leave you without receiving a word of consolation and a blessing. Through you, I will give them a new heart and a new spirit. I will infuse in them a desire for holiness, new and fresh love for me, for my church. None of this will be your doing. I will act through you. Humble yourself in my presence. Tell me your trust in my merciful love, and I will make you an instrument of love for them. Despise not one of them. Now, let's look here at the footnotes at the bottom of the page. Especially there, Matthew 18, verse 10. Let's take a look at that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. My Father who is in heaven. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety-nine on the hillside and go in search? Is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish? So he's talking here about the abusiveness to children. So we see here, that, that has come up here. Then he says there in the book of Sirach, chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, Sirach, chapter 3. Okay, 315. In the day of your affliction, it will be remembered in your favor as a frost in fair weather. Your sins will melt away. Whoever forsakes his father is like a blasphemer, and whoever angers his mother is cursed to the Lord. All right, once again, abusiveness, this time looking into the family. We've seen this within family structures. Then again in Sirach, chapter 8, verses 6 to 9. Do not disdain a man when he is old, for some of us are growing old. Do not rejoice over anyone's death. Remember that we all must die. Do not slight the discourse of the sages, but busy yourself with their maximums because they will gain you instruction. And learn how to serve great men. Do not disregard the discourse of the aged. For they themselves learn from their fathers, because from them you will gain understanding, and you will learn how to give an answer in time of need. So, what this is, 
This is speaking of euthanasia. Getting rid of the old people. But Sirach says, the wisdom and the knowledge we draw from them should be listened to. But today's society does not want that. So, we see here the abusiveness in different forms. How it can be twisted. But it comes under the same abusiveness. That's what he's telling us here in the bottom of that page in footnote number two. See in each and every see in each and every priest my own features traced in his soul by the Holy Spirit on the day of his ordination. This, this is very strong language because of the fact that the indelible mark upon the soul of a priest's ordination brings about the greatest of all answers a priest has to give to Christ. So what happens here is express reverence for your brother priests. Avoid the familiarity that will impede my ability to the work through you. Now, this is speaking about abusiveness to other priests. We see this in dioceses. We see it in our own dioceses. Uh, we see it's everywhere in religious communities. Jealousy, hatred, power struggles, and they abuse one another. And we see this, and this is what the bishop's going to talk about today, um, because it all has come to light. And this thing blew the lid off of the, the pressure cooker when uh, Fox News broke the story about the Pope and about what's happening in other dioceses, abusiveness to priests by other priests. Now this is all coming out again. So it's going to create a scandalous reaction again for the church. Jesus had foretold this, and here it is. Then he goes on to say here, When a priest is too familiar in ministering to souls, he takes the place that belongs to me and to no other. He makes himself the point of attraction and steals my glory for his own sanctification. This is where you get these priests that think they're better than anyone else. It's got to be their way or no way. If it's, if it's not suiting them, then you're out. That's what Jesus is saying here. In other words, they're throwing Jesus out with the bathwater. And what's happening is their glory and their own sanctification has brought about their self-destruction. So Jesus goes on here to say, do not look for personal comfort or satisfaction on your own needs in serving my priests. In other words, they should not look for self-satisfaction. They have to give that in the name of Jesus to others. Seek only my face and love with my wounded heart. I will give you a profound reverence for your brother. This of myself will touch their vulnerability in such a way to give them a sense of their own supernatural, supernatural dignity. There is dignity and respect in the priesthood. And that's what Jesus 
wants to regenerate. And we have not seen it yet among the clergy. Consecrate each priest who comes to me to my Immaculate Mother. Now some have done this. Allow her to use you as she worked through St. John in her ministry to the other apostles in the early church. Continue to pray for your brother priests. Your daily Ave Marie Stella is pleasing to my mother for the grace of priests. It is she who inspired you to take up this prayer each day. So, this reaction to the mother of God, once again, by Christ, is important. It's part of the priesthood. So, any priest who disgraces Mary in any way also loses that bond within his priesthood and will be responsible to her. That's why when that priest died, Mary appeared. Can't escape it. Regardless who you are. When that priest died and he saw Jesus, and after Jesus spoke, it's not prayed. If they don't pray it, Mother of God will not intercede. Those that disgrace Mary will be disgraced themselves. He goes on here to say, I accept this time for you as if it were in my Eucharistic presence. Tomorrow come to me in the tabernacle. Blessings await you in my sacramental presence. I bless you by my wounded heart. Be the priest of my Eucharistic face, which is ready to receive all priests in a refuge, a place of healing and refreshment and a boundless mercy. Now, in the book, The Golden Arrow, and by the way, she's got more copies if you need to purchase one. In this book, which corresponds here, we see here... Page number? Huh? Page number? Yeah, I'm going to give you the page number now. 116. where it says there at the middle of the page, make a novena of reparation for blasphemies uttered against God's holy name before the blessed sacrament by reciting in addition to the golden arrow the 24 exercises which he had inspired me to compose a short time ago. Our Lord also made known to me that it was only proper for children to help their mother. This is also a reference to the laity. To pray to the mother of God. To help Mary. To pray for priests. That priest will turn once again to the Eucharistic face of Christ. In the Blessed Sacrament. I felt I could not possibly refuse to carry out this order of our Savior, especially when as an intimate of how he added, Oh, if you only knew what I have done for you and how much I care for your soul, you would truly be astonished to see the Creator basing himself to profoundly towards a more perfect creature. This is, you know, what our Blessed Mother and Jesus want. 
But have we done it? Have priests done it? No. Have the laity done it? No. A lot have turned away from the Blessed Mother. A lot have turned away from the Eucharistic presence. And a lot have turned away from the presence of Christ himself as Savior. So this is what our Blessed Mother is saying and what Jesus himself is pointing out. <coughs> and so we see this. They have become mere creatures and have forgotten their place in terms of the sanctity of priesthood and the laity and sanctity of church and praying to Almighty God. Now, we'll take our break and then we'll come back and we'll look here on page 70 at Thursday, June 26 of 08. She has made coffee back there. 